Hello. We're so happy uh, to be talking to you about our new award from the American Diabetes Association to study COVID and its impact in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. My name is Carla Greenbaum, and I direct the diabetes program at the Benaroya Research Institute at Virginia Mason. We're a nonprofit research institute here in Seattle, and our main focus is to understand immunology and immune diseases, including type 1 diabetes and other autoimmune diseases. We have a big program. We study an awful lot about immunology, and we've really taken that knowledge and trying to understand really what's going on with COVID and diabetes. And with me today is Kate Speak, who's going to tell us a little bit more about that project. Thanks, Carla. Uh, So as Carla mentioned, I'm Kate Speak, and I'm also on the faculty in the Diabetes Clinical Research Program here at BRI. And you know, there were sort of two really big things that we wanted to learn in this study. You know, first, as Carla mentioned, we work in a place that focuses very heavily on the on the immune drivers of lots of different diseases. So here we wanted to ask whether there was something immunologically that we could see that might help us understand why people with diabetes might be more likely to get complications from their COVID compared to those without diabetes. And secondly, we wanted to know, you know, was there something about people's diabetes? You know, what kind of meds people are on, how their control's going, whether they have complications from their diabetes that might help us understand and explain the the disease severity that that we see among that group. Um, So to do this work, we collaborated with an infectious disease doc named Uma Malhotra at our affiliated hospital, Virginia Mason, to collect some samples from people who were hospitalized with covid you know, so these are folks who were pretty ill. Um, some of them would go on to get very sick and need to be cared for in the ICU, and others didn't. Um, in addition, we were able to collect a few samples from people with mild COVID who came to our hospital through the emergency room or who were screened for infection because they were going to get a surgery. And our study then wanted to ask, you know, what, what's going to explain just, just how sick someone will become after they get infected? So I want to make sure we're clear that it's not a study about the whole population and who might get infected with this virus. Those kinds of studies would normally include a whole lot more people who had mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. So here we were we're focused on on understanding disease severity. Um, You know, here in Seattle, many businesses, most businesses and schools were were in that initial sort of shutdown process by mid-March. Um, And by the first week of April, we had a team on site seven days a week to collect and process and analyze samples from those COVID patients that were hospitalized across the street. So that data that we collected, you know, from April on throughout the summer into now is what we're looking at to try and understand how that immune system is responding differently to COVID in people with and without diabetes. Um, and I should mention that about 40% of the population in our study has diabetes, so, so we're really able to, to understand what's, what's going on here. Um, we're only partway through our work, but we've already identified that there are at least six different immune markers that are significantly different in people who have diabetes compared to people who don't at the time that they get hospitalized for COVID. Now, some of these are the same kinds of markers that we previously found to be associated with disease severity um, in in sort of everybody who gets hospitalized for COVID. But others we think are sort of more accentuated or or stronger in people with diabetes. Um, We're continuing to look at these data, and we're moving along now to that next question of understanding whether there's factors about people with diabetes that can help us understand their disease severity. Um, I can say right now that the vast majority of people in our study who who had poor COVID outcomes, who didn't do so well, who had to go on a ventilator, for example, um, also had other things going on with their health beyond their diabetes. So most of them had kidney failure, heart disease, or, or other pretty considerable health concerns. Um, but I, I we you know we're going to look next at, at what was going on specifically with their diabetes to see if there's something we can understand there. Um, I want to note that I really appreciate the ADA for giving us the, the chance to conduct this work. And now I would like to hand it back to Carla, who can you know, tell us a little bit more about the diabetes work that we do here at BRI. Thanks, Kate. Again, I do want to emphasize that one of the unique aspects of Benaroy Research Institute putting, pulling off this study is really the infrastructure and our interests that we've had for a long time. So we do a lot of work here 
that involves translational science. That means getting samples and information from people that are living with autoimmune diseases um, or have consequences of them or their treatment. And we then can take those samples and really apply the deep uh, immunological knowledge that we have with the other investigators here at Benaroya Research Institute to understand that disease. And in fact, that immunology information is really where we spoke, spend much of our time and research effort. For example, we have been at the forefront of identifying people who are going to develop type 1 diabetes. So these are populations of people who don't yet have clinical diabetes, but actually have the immune markers measured as antibodies that tell us they will someday develop diabetes. And as a result of that, we can actually offer clinical trials, treatments, to see if we can slow or delay that disease process. Now, much of this work, even though it conducted here at BRI, is really done as part of a big international network. Your tax dollars are the NIH hard at work for a network called Diabetes Trial Net, which involves investigators all over the world who are identifying people at risk for getting diabetes and then offering treatment to slow and delay the disease. Now, I'm privileged to be chair of this international network right now, and here at BRI, we are therefore central, not only at conducting these diseases, but using all that immunology expertise to understand who is responding to therapy, who's going to do better, who's going to do worse. So that's a big part of what we do here. In fact, we are the leading institute at the in the Northwest that is studying type 1 diabetes, its causes, and trying to find ways to predict and prevent that disease and slow the destruction. As I mentioned, much of this work is people who don't even have diabetes. It's testing their relatives through trial net for these antibodies. We also have studies with people who are recently diagnosed with diabetes and people that have been living with type 1 diabetes for many years. So we can understand, are there still some insulin-producing beta cells there that we can save? Can we try some new therapies and see if we can alter the course in people at all stages of that disease? So I could go on and on because I love the work we do. Everybody at BRI in the diabetes program is passionate to make a difference in the lives of people living with type 1 diabetes. And again, we're extremely grateful for the ADA to award us this grant. We hope to provide the insight that will really change the course of COVID for people living with diabetes. Thank you very much.